Welcome back to another Geek What video, and this is the long awaited $700 RX 480 build, uh, PC build. Uh, this gaming PC will smash all of the latest AAA titles at 1080p, and I mean all of the latest AAA titles. Uh, Overwatch is going to be completely smashed. We've also got uh, some upcoming titles such as Battlefield 1 which is going to do great in. Uh, not to mention some of the slightly older harder to run games such as Crisis 3, Battlefield 4, Battlefield Hardline and this build is just going to get insane frame rates. So something like Star Wars Battlefront at 1440p high to ultra settings you're still going to see above 60 frames per second. So let's kick it off with the CPU. I went for the only option, the i5-6500, it's a quad-core CPU from Intel, it isn't overclockable, however overclocking doesn't warrant the best price to performance ratio, something you're definitely going to be going for if you're going to pick up an RX 480, it's definitely a very uh, kind of mid-range, kind of open to everybody kind of offering. It comes out the box clocked at 3.2 GHz, which is absolutely fine, and will actually excel something like a 6800K, which is a 6-core um, extreme chip, in something like gaming, because it has faster single-threaded performance. It's got 4 cores, it's got all you need, and it's, it's on Intel's Skylake platform, supporting DDR4 and all that good stuff. For the motherboard, the Gigabyte GAH110M-A is a superb option. It comes in a micro ATX form factor, so you don't pay a premium for large, nor do you pay a premium for small. If you did go up to the Z170 chipset, you would get better support for things like RAID configurations, and for NVMe SSDs, and for more SATA ports, and that kind of thing. However, the Z170 chipset is the only one which allows overclocking, and because our CPU isn't overclockable, there's simply no point in spending that money. It isn't going to get you extra frame rate, in games so realistically this looks good enough go and pick one of these up for the ram 18 gigabyte dimp of kingston's hyperx fury black is fine you can get it in black white blue or red and it comes clocked at 2133 megahertz it's ddr4 which means that if you were to get a new cpu and three, four years time, you're going to have some memory lying around anyway, and having 1 8 gig dim leaves plenty of room for up to 32 gigabytes of ram in this build. For storage, this was a bit of a hard decision. You either go a fast SSD and a slow hard drive, or just a bigger, slower hard drive, so I went for the best of both worlds. I went for a hybrid drive. It combines the speed of an SSD and the capacity of a hard drive. A separate SSD and hard drive will still be the fastest option. However, this definitely increases the speed over a standard 7200 RPM hard drive. The hard drive element, the spinning platters in this, are of course 7200 RPM, and we've got some nice uh, cache in there to, to speed the most commonly opened applications and games and, and documents and windows uh, up a little bit. For the video card, there was no option but the RX 480. Now, uh, I'll leave a link to these as soon as I can in the description below. It may be that you may be able, might not be able to find one yet. They're out of stock in quite a lot of places, but it comes in between $200 and $250. Uh, so just beware for prices to change, obviously, as demand goes up and down. But if you're watching this in like three, four weeks' time, you're going to be absolutely fine. It's a great card. I went for the 4 gigabyte variant purely because 8 gig could be classed as a little bit overkill, and the 8 gig variant was out of the budget for this build. If you did want to see one with the 8 gig variant, head up to my $800 build, and, and that's got an 8 gigabyte uh, Radeon RX 480 in it. For the case, I went for the NZXT S340. You can get it in black, black and red, blue, black and red, uh, white, or even a black and green Razer edition. Uh, but a plain black for this build is great, and it comes in at less than $60, which is just a win-win situation. It takes some of the best features from NZXT's H440 and puts them into a much cheaper uh, enclosure that still looks very, very nice. You've got USB 3, USB 2, headphone, microphone, front panel power reset, and a big side panel window, power supply shroud, SSD show-off area, and support for hard drives and like three graphics cards so you just can't go wrong for the power supply the EVJ Supernova NEX 750 watt is an 80 plus bronze certified semi modular ATX power supply semi modular means you only plug in the cables that you need and you can get some nice cable extensions if you wished uh, for like 10 20 dollars a piece but this power supply is very nice it, it performs above 80 percent efficiency and that's tested by an independent company at 20 50 and 100 percent load scenarios but if you did like this build make sure to drop a like rating and to subscribe and as always we'll see you in the next Geek or What video. <laughs>